So the Oxford scale, a simple way of gauging our patient strength using manual muscle testing on a scale between naught to five. If you wanna find out how we use it in practice and what each of the levels mean, then check out this video. Hey everyone, I'm Khalid Maidan. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So you wanna check your patient's muscle strength. Well, you can get them to do a series of movements. You can use isometric resisted tests. You can see how much resistance they can push against. But ultimately, we need a way of being able to write this down and differentiate and grade it from one week to the next so we can actually check their progress. This is where the Oxford scale comes in. Here it is on the screen. Let's take you through each of the levels. So level zero means that your patient is unable to create a contraction. Level one means that they have just a flicker when they use their muscle. Level two means that they are able to recreate movement with gravity eliminated. Level three means that they are able to recreate movement against gravity. Level four means they are able to recreate movement against a resistance and level five means they have full strength. Let's break down each of these levels for you. So let's talk about level zero and one together. So zero means no contraction. Now, if we take the example of the biceps muscle and it trying to recreate elbow flexion, it might be that you're holding your patient's arm and you ask them to flex their elbow and nothing happens at all. That would be level zero, no contraction or you ask them to do that movement, and all that happens is you see a little flickering at the biceps muscle. That would be level one, a flicker. Now, when might this happen in practice? Well, one of the most common examples is when your patient has had a significant neurological injury, where the innovation to that muscle has been so disrupted that the message going from the brain down to the muscle is just not getting through very well. Therefore, they're able to create very little in terms of a contraction, which generates either a zero or a one. So let's look at levels two and three together as they both assess movement in the context of gravity. So level two means that your patient is able to recreate or reproduce a movement with gravity eliminated, and level three is where they are able to reproduce a movement against gravity. So if we look at the biceps again and this idea of elbow flexion, if we bring our patient's arm into this kind of 90 degree flexed position and then ask them to flex their elbow from here, they're actually using this kind of horizontal movement, meaning that they don't actually have to work too hard against gravity to recreate the movement. So that's how we might be able to assess their ability to reproduce movement at level two. Level three would then be checking their ability to reproduce the movement against gravity. So for elbow flexion, that would quite simply mean bringing their elbow to touch their shoulder with their arm perhaps in front of them or even at a neutral position as long as the hand is moving against gravity in order to touch the shoulder. So if they're unable to do this movement against gravity, but they are able to do the horizontal movement, that might be classified as a level two. And if they are able to reproduce the movement against gravity, that could be a level three. OK, let's check out level four, being able to reproduce movement against resistance. So this might be where the therapist produces a resisted pressure that the patient has to move against, or it might be where you use an external load like a dumbbell or another small weight to see if your patient can move that in order to recreate the movement. And both of those would indicate a level four. So if we're thinking about the biceps muscle, we might put a kilo weight or a five kilo weight in our patient's hand and ask them to flex their elbow against gravity so that we can keep up with level three, but this time with the resistance of an external load or against the therapist's pressure to see if they can reproduce the movement. So what's therefore the difference between level four, being able to move against resistance, and level five, full strength? Well, ultimately, level five means that your patient is able to demonstrate their full normal strength, perhaps what they would have been able to do before their injury, or perhaps equal to what they can do on the other limb, or perhaps in relation to 
the standard norm for someone of their age or their gender, the normal population. So until they are able to achieve that, it might be that they can only recreate the movement against some resistance, a smaller weight, a medium weight, but not quite full. That's really how we can differentiate between level four and level five in practice. Now, this is where there's an element of contention because sometimes different patients will be able to demonstrate ability to resist a small weight, a medium weight, or quite a large weight, but not quite level five. This is where you sometimes see therapists write four minus out of five or four plus out of five in the notes to differentiate a low level four or a high level four. And there's some contention as to whether or not this is actually acceptable. And I suppose that brings us on to the major flaw with the Oxford scale. It's tough to always make it consistent from one week to the next or even between therapists. So if that's the case, that's where you may use something like a handheld dynamometer or a crane scale device, which will be able to give you an exact numerical measurement of your patient's strength. Much more accurate, much more comparable from one week to the next. And also it really allows your patient to see their progress. And of course you as the therapist, more accurately. So guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you found it useful and that it's given you a better understanding of the Oxford scale. And if you'd like more of our resources, then check out the description below for details of our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and our website clinicalphysio.com where we've got loads more for you. Otherwise, my name is Khalid Maidan. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you really soon right here on Clinical Physio.